I told you I would handle it. How? How is not the point? How is exactly the point? Paul Estorno is a tumor on this administration and on everything we've built. He tried to kill Fitz. How are you not wanting to rain vengeance down upon that man? I'm more interested in justice. Justice is for regular people. Justice is for Fatty in Ohio folding their laundry and drinking their beers. We are not regular people. We are. We're the people. And if we're not, we should be, because that's what it means, we the people. It means all of us. Hollis should be brought to justice. And if what we did gets out? Then it gets out, and we're brought to justice. You're willing to bring down the whole republic because you feel guilty. You know what our electoral process is. It's magical. It's like believing in Santa, or the Tooth Fairy, or the Easter Bunny. Magical, as long as they believe. What you're doing is telling the people that the shiny presents and the bulging stockings on Christmas morning are just mom and dad staying up all night to do the work. You're telling them, we're Santa, we're the Easter Bunny, we're the Tooth Fairy. You're taking the magical way. You're ruining Christmas morning, and the whole republic is going to come crumbling down because you're not tough enough to do what needs to be done. Get your house in order, Cyrus, and hire a lawyer. A good one! Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Peter Travers, and welcome to Popcorn, where we tell you what's happening in pop culture at the movies and TV. And you have just seen a scene from one of my favorite TV shows, Scandal, <laughs> starring Kerry Washington as a really strong, damaged, all kinds of things. <laughs> but she can fix things. And maybe she can fix the show. So, Carrie, welcome, <laughs> Thank welcome you. to Popcorn. It's such an honor to hear that you're a fan of the show. Oh, no, I'm, I'm obsessed. <laughs> I've just sort of lost it. But oh, good. For those poor benighted people yes, that yes. haven't seen season one, let That's alone right. caught up with season two, okay. I want you to describe all the pressures on you. Sure. Who this character, Olivia Pope, is. I play this woman named Olivia Pope. Oh, that's and it then. I, yeah, and that's it. That's the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she is at the helm of Pope & Associates. And Pope & Associates is a crisis management firm where basically people walk into our office at the worst day of their lives, very powerful people, and they say, please help me fix this crisis. And we do. And part of the reason why everybody at Pope & Associates is so good at fixing crisis is because we all have a little bit of experience with our own <laughs> scandals, including Olivia Pope, who um, has been in a complicated romantic relationship with the President of the United States. But she Just used that. to work at the White House. The but married, now she doesn't. The married yes, president. Yes, the very of married the president States. of the United States. States. But that's why she no longer works at the White House and is trying to, to separate herself from him and from their chemistry. You know what I love about how you play how you play her? That every day she comes to work or even the phone rings. Yeah. <laughs> even anything is happening. Mm -hmm. And a tsunami of problems yeah. hit, hit her. It's just yeah. like wong, like yeah. this wave. And yet you like you take maybe a a moment and then boom, there's some kind of solution going on in yeah. your head. Is it's, that you, Carrie? No, it's <laughs> no not at all. <laughs> oh, no, it's not really at all. fun to play someone who is so much smarter than me and kind of um, she really is this is what I love most about playing her, is the complexity. You know, she is very empowered, very strong, very in charge. She's a problem solver, she's a fixer at work. But in her personal life, she is much more torn and vulnerable and confused. And so she's always trying to balance those two qualities. So when you are working with this wonderful cast that you have, yeah. are you always with Shonda Rhimes, the creator of this, saying, what's happening next? Do you have any idea? We have no clue. When you work in Shondaland, as we call Shondaland. it, yes, you don't get an outline of the season at all. So it's part of why, you know, the show has a really big following on Twitter and, and our social media life, the life of the show is, is very vibrant because we really love interacting with fans because when you guys are watching the show and we read your tweets and your Facebook posts, you have the same reactions that we have when we're reading the scripts, the same kind of shock and awe and disbelief. And so it's fun to experience that with the fans because that's what we have week after week. Well, that's great, but at the same time, I would be wanting to know. Like when I tweet, it's always <laughs> with, what? Huh? She did what? <laughs> she rigged the election? I know. What, what is well, going on? You know, on? I actually, it's funny because when I read that episode, I cried like a baby because, you know, for me personally, Carrie, I'm very involved in politics and I, and I kind of hold 
those first three words of the Constitution, we the people, to be somewhat sacred. And um, to have Olivia Pope kind of commit crimes against her democracy was so tragic for me. Yeah. So you're saying you didn't uh, fix the election? No, for I did not. I did really? not. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I would not. worry about that. <laughs> I mean, you play it so persuasively that I can't imagine that people don't come it's up to you and say, acting, "Hey, Carrie, can Peter. you look at this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, can you please help me with this? I need something to do." Oh, yeah, no. Well, you know, my my character is actually inspired by a real woman named Judy Smith, who is a crisis management guru, um, and she worked in the first Bush White House. Um, um, so you can talk to Judy about about all of that, but she. Well, um, she's not here. I want to hear what you <laughs> genuinely learned from her. Or, or, yeah. Or you just because Shonda is so in control of that, I can't uh -huh. think you would meet with Judy and say, "I do." This will be the next. Uh, well, we part. don't decide what, what the writers do, which is so much fun. Is the writers kind of let their imaginations soar. They come up with the most scandalous situations that they can think of, and then they call Judy and say, okay, what would you do? How would you fix it? Um, and so we kind of get the best of both worlds. We get kind of the wonderful imaginary lives that, that our writers are giving birth to week after week, but we also get the grounding and the real life crisis management fixing. I always wonder how you people who do TV series, mm -hmm. when you say you can't tell, how are you punished? We, what goes on? Is um, there a room you get that fired. Shonda has? You get you fired. Get fi really? Is, that it? Is it in you a contract? You get fired. We've had some pretty uh, tough talking twos about uh, spoilers that weren't supposed to get out. So we are we are under strict uh, advice to to maintain secrecy. It startled me when I was told the fact that there hasn't been an African-American actress yeah. top-lining a network TV show in four decades. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I mean, not in my lifetime. So I wasn't even born the last time there was a black woman in a lead on a network drama. So it, it is kind of, I wasn't aware of it either when I signed up to do the job. I, I knew that I had never seen anything like this before, but I didn't know. But when you hear it, it yeah. all goes yeah. in your head it's and you're saying, amazing. that's correct, that's yeah. not happening. Yeah. So do you wear that mantle of responsibility? <laughs> is I it, actually have a crown a that says crown. first in 40. 40. No. Yeah. Um, I, um, no, I, and I actually, I didn't feel pressured per se. What, what I felt like, was I felt like the pressure was on the American people. You know, were we as a country and now as a world, because the show is now on the air all over Europe and Australia, and um, so were we as a world going to show up and allow for our lead characters, our heroes, to look like more than one kind of person? You know, were we were we ready to be inclusive in our storytelling? And I'm really so excited that the success of the show says that we are, that as a culture we've come to a place where we are willing to to sit at home and, and watch stories about people that look like that people that are from all different races and genders and ethnicities. A lot more women in this world would speak very good German if they had Christoph Waltz and Leo DiCaprio as their German tutors. That's right, his mom <laughs> is very German, inspiring. I forgot that. <laughs>